Hi, my name is Graham Potter and in the workshop today we've got this very attractive old uh, olive. Uh, this is uh, Olea Sylvestris and uh, as you can see it's been in a pot for a number of years and had some basic work done to it. Uh, and It's come to us recently and I feel that the time is ready that we can really begin to uh, show the bonsai in this very nice material. On the face of it, it looks as though it's almost done itself, but it actually hasn't. And the tree does present us with some significant design problems. Uh, for instance, this part of the trunk. The trunk is wider front to back than it is side to side. Um, we've also got some very straight and unattractive lines in the branch structure. Uh, this area here, we have a large piece of carving, and at the same time, we have this very attractive natural deadwood. So, of course, we have to try and blend that together. Uh, so, as much as it looks like a straightforward tree, it does present a few challenges. So, as we go along we're going to uh, show you how I'd like to deal with some of those. This material presents as one of one or two unique challenges. Here you can see some beautiful old natural deadwood, beautifully weathered and fantastic colour. At this point you can see where in the past somebody's wired up a shoot to make a new leader which is very very useful uh, and because of the size it's giving the tree a little bit uh, of maturity. But then we come from this fairly thin trunk to this great big lump of wood at the bottom. And as you can see in the middle of the picture, we've got a very ugly scar here, which we need to work on. But around that, we've got this wonderful craggy old bark uh, and some interesting potential with live veins here. And at this point here, you can see an old chainsaw scar. Invariably, when you're working with the Amadori, you find that you have good and bad points in the material. Uh, unless you're very wealthy or very very lucky uh, you won't be finding material that has all the perfect attributes that we would like to uh, conform to what might be termed the rules of bonsai so the secret is to accentuate the best parts of the tree and then to minimize the effects of the parts of the tree which are perhaps not absolutely ideal at this point Ramon has finished the wiring on the tree and we've begun to do some of the dead wood work here you can see we've gone around the edges of the live bark, cleaned away everything that was dead back to live tissue. Uh, that's given us some interesting possibilities with live veins. And now I have to turn my attention to this very ugly piece of wood that's growing horizontally across the trunk, which is really presenting us with uh, quite a challenge, I think.
One of the main attractions of this tree is this beautiful old natural deadwood you can see here. Um, when we're carving this we have to try and blend the two together. But one of the significant things about this wood is uh, that the surface of the wood begins to oxidize. And what we have to do is preserve this wood. Uh, we have to clean the soft stuff off the top for a start. But obviously we don't want to lose the natural character of the wood. So what we, do, uh, what we use for that is this uh, stainless steel brush which basically is very springy and quite soft and by just simply brushing that carefully you can see some of the very soft material that's coming off the uh, off the top because the bristles are long they get deep inside the cracks and remove everything that's soft that means that we uh, can then preserve this wood quite easily and uh, it won't uh, we're not losing the natural character of it Left with its own devices, especially in England with the with the uh, the fairly wet climate we have, it will very quickly begin to decay and rot, and we'll lose it altogether.